We turn now to the politics of the midterm elections. The debate around Judge Brett Kavanaugh's confirmation raises questions about its potential effect on voters as they get ready to cast their ballots in November. Lisa Desjardins has more. We've seen Democratic enthusiasm mounting this election season, but could we see a rise in Republican motivation amidst the brutal battle over confirming Judge Kavanaugh? Who else could answer those questions better than our own Politics Monday panel, the fabulous Amy Walter of the Cook Political Report, and I'm sorry, Tamara Keith of NPR. I did you guys in the wrong That's order. Okay. I'm sorry we about that. We get mixed up all I the know. time. I'm a fill-in here on this one. Um, I want to actually start, but can we just take a collective deep breath on behalf of my personal blood pressure and perhaps the nation's psyche before we start talking about Judge Kavanaugh. And can we start in this topic by looking at there, there was the Quinnipiac poll found, of course, Americans are split on this. But there's some really interesting paradox, I think, for Americans. More Americans believe Christine Blasey Ford, but also a near majority believe that there's a smear campaign against Judge Kavanaugh. Amy, America is conflicted here. What does polling like that do when we're about to go to an election, what does it tell us about voters? Right. I think what we learned from this hearing is that Americans are as polarized on this issue as they are about pretty much any other issue that's put in front of them. Whether you're a Democrat or you're a Republican, your decision on how you feel about this is driven as much by your partisanship than almost anything else. The, a poll that I saw over the weekend uh, by the, uh, the folks at Huffington Post and YouGov found that, again, not surprisingly, men who supported Donald Trump overwhelmingly said that they could identify with what Brett Kavanaugh was going through. Women who voted for Hillary Clinton overwhelmingly said that they identified with Christine Blasey Ford. But I think fundamentally this question about who does it, who's it going to help or hurt in the midterm elections, right? Democratic candidates, Republican candidates, is this about the enthusiasm advantage? I think we have to remember a couple of things. The first is in 2016, we know that the Supreme Court was a mm. big issue for Republican voters. And the thinking among a lot of Republicans was, this is how Donald Trump won. Uh, skeptical Republican voters held their nose. They didn't really like Trump, but they wanted the Supreme Court. Mm. This year, all the polling that I've seen thus far, since the hearings took place, at, so at this moment, we're seeing increased Democratic enthusiasm, higher than what uh, Republicans um, on the issue of the Supreme Court, how important the issue is for their vote. And finally, I think when all is said and done, the issue that drives this election is still going to be Donald Trump. How you feel about Donald Trump is going to be much more important in determining your vote than how you feel about this hearing. Tam, you know, Democrats now, you heard Yamish talk about this earlier, are raising more and more questions about did Brett Kavanaugh lie last week? And they're raising questions about his drinking habits, for example. We're seeing witnesses who support what he says, counter witnesses who say, no, he was this kind of a drinker or not. Is this a change in Democratic strategy, both on this confirmation and politically? The, there has been a shift in what people are focusing on. Mm -hmm. um, it's not clear whether this is a strategic shift or not, but certainly there is more focus on whether he was truthful in his testimony. Mm -hmm. And the area where there's most question about his truthfulness is when it comes to his drinking. Uh, Brett Kavanaugh, on a number of occasions, was sort of pressed on his drinking in high school and college and was either evasive in his answers, uh, sort of downplayed it, at times, or pushed back on a couple of senators at times, asking them how much they drank. Right. Um, and and so President Trump was asked about that today in, in the White House press briefing. And President Trump uh, sort of incorrectly said, well, Brett Kavanaugh in his testimony said that he had a drinking problem when he was younger, um, which is not what Kavanaugh had mm -hmm. said. Um, but... Uh, <sighs> The, he was reflecting the, the amount of times yes. it came up. Yes, because it came up frequently. Yeah. The White House yeah. uh, realizes that this is an issue. Uh, they are pushing back. They're insisting that Kavanaugh basically admitted to everything except blacking out. Uh, and, and they're also now pushing out statements from uh, witnesses from college who say, no, 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 I was his roommate, and that other roommate who said something else is wrong. Amy, who does this help in the midterms? If, if Brett Kavanaugh be, gets on the Supreme Court, Mitch McConnell says their vote's going to happen this week. Right. Does that help Republicans in the midterms? I don't know. I mean, again, <laughs> it's the conventional wisdom, right, that they are so fired up about this, not simply because of the importance that they put on the Supreme Court, but because they had to unify together to fight off what they see as a smear campaign by Democrats. But then we hear from Democrats and even some Republicans who say, but... 
while it may help Republicans in some of these red states, especially in Senate seats, mm -hmm. it's really going to hurt Republican candidates in these swing suburban areas where women are already breaking decidedly against Republicans, mm -hmm. against the president, including independent women. Those are really the key mm -hmm. voters here that strategists are looking to at this point to determine where the House goes. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that they're, they're going to turn to the side of Republicans on this issue. Another factor maybe in where the House goes is the money. And we saw Politico report today, they did analysis that they said that Democrats have raised something like $35 million just in August alone for their Democratic candidates. Tim, what does this mean? Does this, does that mean more votes for Democrats? Does it just mean that they <laughs> want to put in more money? What does it mean? Yeah, it, it does mean that there are a lot of Democrats with checkbooks who are very <laughs> interested in a lot of races all over the country. There are also Democratic candidates who have had these incredibly viral ads that they've put out that have gone viral on social media, have generated support. I mean, you hear... People, I, you know, because I cover politics, I, people ask me, like, what do you think of this race in Kentucky? And I'm like, wait, what's going on here? Um, there, there, there is a huge amount of interest and there is a huge amount of enthusiasm. You see that in the money. You see that in the number of people who showed up for a Beto O'Rourke rally in Texas. Uh, you, you see the energy and enthusiasm in a lot of places. Now, Republicans would say that they also have a lot of energy, and they do just not as much as the Democrats uh, at this time. Yeah, I mean, I'm talking to consultants on both sides, many of whom have been doing this for a long time, and they've never seen uh, this amount of money. More important, they've never seen an incumbent, an incumbent party get outspent the way Democrats are outspending Republicans in these congressional races. I mean, it's, it's, um, it's a mind-boggling number. And this is why, when we talk about why is the House in play, mm -hmm. the House is in play because the amount of enthusiasm that Democrats have is translating in all these different ways. It, in, it turned into, one, enthusiasm for Democratic voters, candidates who said, I'm going to run for office, including a bunch of people who'd never run for office mm -hmm. before. And now the money, what it's done is it's taken a playing field that was really narrow and it was structurally very challenging for Democrats because there were only 25, 30 seats in play, and it expanded that mm -hmm. universe to now we have a universe right now of about 60 Republican seats that are in danger. That is it's why. That's an amazing that's number. What the, that's what enthusiasm does. It's an amazing does. number. My yeah. spreadsheet cannot handle any more no, races, sorry. okay? <laughs> Just want to let you know. Um, all right, let me ask what for us political wonks I think would be a fun question. I feel like the universe has been dominated by just a handful of stories, but let me ask you, what political stories are we not talking about that we should be, Tam? One, uh, a temporary budget passed, uh, a spending measure, and there wasn't a massive fight. Nothing crazy happened. It just passed. The president signed it. No drama, no drama, which is wild Maybe. that there was no drama. But also, this is a small thing, but there has only been one... There was In the month of September, there was only one televised White House mm -hmm. press briefing. Daily White House press briefing only happened on one day in the entire month of September. Briefly, Amy. Um, I do think this money is absolutely going to be the story of the 2018 campaign. The question for Democrats is, can they replicate this when it's no longer just simply about ousting Donald Trump or his party in the midterm elections? And when they might have one candidate That's for right. 2020. Right. Thank you very much. Sure. Amy Walter, The Cook Political Report. Tamara Keith of NPR. Thank you both. You're welcome. welcome.